If you are about to go shoot video with the Fuji X-T20 and are looking for some foolproof settings, you've come to the right place. Let's make this quick. You'll need a fast SD card. I recommend the U3 type, now also called V30. Always best to format the card before you start shooting. Always best to back up the files on the card before you format. If you have a non-Fuji external mic, you'll also need a 3.5 to 2.5 adapter. They may not be easy to find. Start by spinning the left dial to movie. If your lens has optical stabilization, OIS, turn it on, unless you're using a tripod. If the lens has an auto aperture switch, turn it off, not on the A position. Set the focus selector to S. On a lens with marked aperture settings, turn it to F4. We may adjust that again later. Flip the switch from auto, turn the EV dial to C. Set the shutter speed to 60, 30 if it's a dark interior. Turn the camera on, press menu, and scroll down to the movie settings. I shoot at 4K 2160-2997. Although the menu output screen changes and looks cropped on the HDMI output, which is what's recorded here, there's no change in crop between video modes or between video and stills. 4K output should be on card. If your computer can't handle 4K, use HD 1080-2997. The advantage of 4K is quality, even if you're making an HD video. The advantage of HD is the 15 minute recording length. There's a countdown top center. The 4K limit is 10 minutes. If your aperture dial isn't marked, set it now, turn the ring until the screen displays F4. Even though we set the shutter speed dial to 60 or 30, the back dial makes micro shutter speed adjustments. Check that it's 60 or adjust until it is. Last exposure step is ISO. To make ISO easier to adjust, assign it to a custom button. I find the rear command dial handiest. There are other ways to set the ISO, but this also enables me to see what I'm doing while I'm adjusting. Using the meter screen left as a guide, select an ISO that gets the meter to zero, but feel free to let your creativity make the scene lighter or darker. You can't adjust this while you're recording. The only exposure adjustment you should make while recording is aperture, but the kit lens aperture ring is stepped, so the transition isn't gradual. Use the menu to set white balance, use one of the presets, but selecting a K setting while looking at the scene gives you a little more control. Press again if you'd like to fine tune. With an external mic, Make sure the mic remote release is on mic. Set the mic level to 2 or 3. The meter will help find the right level. There's no on-screen audio level display while recording. Touch the subject on screen to focus. Although noisy when not recording, it's smooth and silent when you are recording. It's great for rack focus shots. Check the focus finger icon screen right. When it's on shot, it starts recording when you touch the screen. Touch to change it to AF, then it only changes focus. If you're using the shot touch mode, just touch the screen to start recording, use the shutter button to stop. In all other modes, the shutter button starts and stops. Now, if you've got a few more minutes, I've got some advanced tips for you. The left side of the control pad opens the film emulation settings. These provide alternate color response settings, including black and white. In addition, the bottom row of the Q menu has four settings, highlight, shadow, color, and sharpness. I find turning sharpness and color down slightly to be more pleasing. If you'd like a flatter, less contrasty image, try turning shadow and highlight setting down. Minus two is as far as it goes. The screen doesn't flip up. So if you're trying to vlog, use the remote app. Now, I find that the shutter resets more often than I'd like. In order to prevent this, I reverse the command dial setting. Now shutter is the front, where I'm less likely to change it. The kit lens opens to f2.8 when wide. A smaller f number, like f2.8, which is a larger aperture, will let more light in, meaning a lower ISO and softer background. Larger f, sharper background. You pick which is right for your shot but remember that the image gets noisier as the ISO goes up. You may prefer manual focus. By default, the screen displays an expanded view while focusing. 
or use the menu to select Focus Peak Highlight. Many video shooters prefer this. On the menu, color and sensitivity can be selected. I find red a little more obvious than white. An inexpensive on-camera light will brighten a dark scene. Probably have to adjust the white balance. Shooting with the viewfinder will make your shot steadier, and it's easier to see it when it's sunny. If you're going to use the viewfinder, put your eye to it before you start recording. The screens won't switch while recording. There's no touch with the viewfinder. Use the bottom of the control dial to display the focus selection screen. Use the cursor buttons to position. Press the AFL button to focus. This doesn't work while recording. For a custom white balance, switch back to stills mode. It can't be captured in movie mode. Point the square at a white piece of paper or a gray card. Press the shutter to set. Better. Switch back to movie mode. You can start recording again immediately each time the 10 minutes is up. If you are recording continuously, the X-T20 will overheat. The heat alert icon appears at about 22 minutes of 4K recording at room temperature. The camera stops recording after 32 minutes. There are no audible alerts. If audio is important to you, consider an external recorder. I use the Tascam DR40D and dual record on the camera. This enables me to use multiple mics and it has a headphone jack. Well, that's it. I hope your shoot goes well. If you have questions or comments, use the field below. I do read and reply to all relevant and civil questions. Thanks for watching.